Okay, so this is the sixth tutorial in the Action Script 3 for Games series. Um, my stuffy nose is cleared up, so my I won't have that nasally voice that I'm sure you guys loved in the last two tutorials. Um, so this is a big tutorial. Uh, we're gonna write our first function. We're gonna do a lot of things in this tutorial, actually, but I think even though we're gonna cover a lot. It's done in such a simple way that I think it's going to be pretty easy to understand, even though we're going to be covering a lot. So, um, let's get right to it. So, what we've got here, some new things from in this project file. Obviously, you got this character here. Um, we've got two layers. This character, which is a movie clip. I'll go inside the character here to show you. We're in this flyer movie clip, and uh, it's just a simple animation, two layers, and it's a, what is it, 20 frames, but it's only 10 images, one a new image every two frames. So it, that's all it is. It's playing a little slow right now, but um, my computer's chugging because of the, the screen capture thing. Anyway, so that's all it is. It's just animation of this little orange guy here. Which, which the files for this are actually hosted. Um, I'm trying this new thing to make it easier for you guys and ha have some source files attached to these tutorials. I know everybody likes that. So I don't expect you to copy this link, you know, one character at a time. That's going to be pretty annoying, right? So I'm going to try to remember to put in, in the YouTube page this link. And I'll, I'll put it in the comments if I forget to. But uh, that, this source file is hosted for you to make your life a lot easier. You can grab this project file just as is. Although I do suggest you, if you want to copy the character art, go for it. Or use your own. Just pick a 10 frame animation, create a movie clip. Uh, but if you do take my FLA file, write the code yourself. Don't. Don't get in the habit of copying large chunks of code. If you want to copy a, a specific word or what, just to save time, or if it's something you already know, then that's fine. But try to not get in the habit of just copying someone else's code in big chunks, because you're. I'm speaking from experience. I've made that mistake, and you just you get a lot less out of it than if you, even though it's a pain, just write it yourself. Read it, write it, even if you're you're tracing it exactly, you know. So anyway, here we go. Neurotic habit save. So we've got a timeline here, character layer and an actions layer. There's uh, a piece of code on, what is this, seven keyframes here. Every five frames between one and 30, you have a keyframe. And... Since we're writing our, our own function here, this is going to be, I'm hoping, interesting. Our function is called fly right. And I'm throwing some humor your way, and you can, you can do what you want with it. You can laugh or not. Because this is called fly right. But right spelled like the Wright brothers. That's funny, right? So, here we go. Our first function is very simple but you know what we're writing our own function so we're gonna be proud of ourselves and I want you all to pat yourself in the back because you should so our first line of code here is a function call is what it's is what it's called it's a function call just like you've seen with go to and play trace etc we're writing the name of our function which as you can see matches exactly here. If it doesn't match exactly, including capital and lowercase letters, which matter in ActionScript and I think in pretty much every programming language, they matter in JavaScript too. So um, we're matching that exactly. So we've got function, which you can see by the fact that it's highlighted in purple that Flash recognizes it as syntax for the language keep that in mind everything in purple this is the colors might be different for your editor your text editor what if you're using um 
Flash Develop is a popular free one, and there's some others. Uh, mine, anything that's syntax is purple and blue. And everything that's black is code that basically, it's, I want, I want to say it's your own code, but I don't want to confuse you. It's all, this is all my code, but I didn't make up function. That's, you know, that's built in the language. I made up fly right. You know, that I could call this whatever I want, bumblebee. I could call it anything. And as long as the, my function call matches, it'll run. But you can't write whatever you want and expect Flash to treat it as a function. You have to write function. And um, anyway, we'll go one step at a time. So we've got function, the name of the function, and these parentheses, which signify a function. It's a good habit to write colon void here. And the reason for that is you're telling the function that it's not going to be returning anything. And we'll get into later um, what that means to for a function to return something. There are a lot of common ones that you might know, like hit test object or anything that it's common to use boolean uh, stuff, which which means true or false. So anyway, we here's our function, and what it's doing is it's taking our flyer, and it's updating its x position by 10 every time it's called. So every time I write this, this function is going to run. Now it's only once, as you can see here, in this keyframe. It's only being called once. But I'm calling it at every one of these keyframes, at frame 5, at frame 10, etc., all the way to 30. Each one of these keyframes from 5 to 25 is exactly the same. And you'll see that if you download the FLA. The, the fr frame 1 and frame 30 have different code. These are all the same. So you saw frame 1, which is the function itself, as well as the first call to it. And then when you get to 30, the end of the sequence, there's completely different code here, but very simple. You should recognize most of it. So you have a basic if statement, which says, if the flyer, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. I'll unlock that layer so I can click on this guy. His name, the, the reason Flash knows what I'm talking about when I say flyer is because I gave the instance a name. Now, I don't want to dwell on this topic because I think you will, I think most people are going to know uh, you drag something to the screen from you drag a movie clip or a button or a graphic to the from the library or you just draw one and you make it the symbol you have your properties box here you give it a name I named it flyer this guy could be flyer 2 uh, if you're looking up here so that's what I did I'm gonna delete this but this guy is named flyer so that's and you can see right here it says instance name, the pop-up. It's one instance of this movie clip. And this is a class, which I'm going to put another term I'm going to put in your head. Once I link this through ActionScript, it's actually a custom class. And I can give it all kinds of new properties and attributes and functions of its own. We're not, we're not going to get into that yet, but... I just want you to remember that. So anyway, so if we if we play our timeline, nothing happens, right? In in, in Flash, if, of course. But if we do our normal Command Enter, Control Enter, we'll see we'll see the guy move. So what's making him animate is just the movie clip itself. But what's making him move from left to right is our code. So. Once again, to explain that, this animation is making him flap his wings. It's a 10, 10 PNG animation spread over 20 frames. But he would not be moving left to right were it not for our code. And 
Now we're going to go in and take a deeper look at what's happening here. So keep them so you've got your function call once again. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I'm just trying to hit this home because this is a big step forward in in your understanding of ActionScript. So we've got the function call and we have the actual function. So function fly right the void is, is just a, a thing to improve performance and you've got your opening closing brackets for the function and it's it's a one-line function it can't get any simpler than this um, and all it's doing is issuing a command to this flyer instance which is right here so this so all it's saying is the X position, an X pos every any object on the stage has an X and a Y position. It could be this up here. This is zero zero, and in my case, you know, and you're going to go up from here. So this is six forty is my stage size. Uh, you can see is six forty by four eighty. So this would be X six forty. This would be Y four eighty. Y0, Y480. So you got Z, 0, 0, 480, 0. Uh, excuse me, 640, 0. This would be uh, X position 0, Y position 480. And this would be the full amount of the, of the stage. So it would be 640, 480. And there's an info box up here, which is convenient. So if you look as I drag the mouse, I don't know why I didn't do this in the beginning, but see it's at zero, zero. Look over here. 640, right? What I said. 640, zero. Now down here, I can get exact. There we go. I got it exactly. Look at that. X, zero. Y, 480. Once again, we're looking up here. Um, so as you can move a mouse around, you can see all those different positions. You move away off the stage, you can go up and up, go negative. Uh, to get the Y negative positions, you go up. So keep that in mind. X goes from left to right, increasing. Y increases from top to bottom. So it, it can be a little confusing sometimes when you think you're... The X is fairly straightforward, the Y... You think you're increasing the Y, shouldn't it be going up? No, actually the higher Y numbers are down, lower are up, and negative is up here. So that's my diversion on that. But an important concept. So the one line of our function, flyer X plus equals, which is another operator, which I'm not sure if I covered in the last tutorial. I thought it might have, but plus equals 10. So this is the same as saying, it's not as nice looking, but this is the exact same as saying flyer x equals flyer x plus 10. Those are exactly the same pieces of code. But it's as you can see, it's shorter and easier and it looks nicer to write it the other way. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. So every time this function is called, all it's doing is adding 10 to the x coordinate. So boop, 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 etc. And that's what you're seeing. And now it, it, it's playing over and over. And then when it gets to the end of the screen, it goes back to the beginning. And that's our frame 30 code, which I'm sorry I got sidetracked here. But at frame 30, which is the end of our sequence, it's hitting, and since the animation is looping, it's, it's constantly going from 1 to 30. So at the, at, when it hits 30, every time, every second, because our frames per second is 30, if you look over here, so once a second it hits this frame, and it says, if the flyer's x is greater than 575, which is about the middle point, the character registration point it would be right there that's 575 
So when it hits that, if it's greater than 575 inside of our if statement, we say flyer x equals 50, which is actually right where it starts on the left side of the stage. 50 is right over here. So it's just a basic left to right fly cycle. But the reason I wanted to show you this is, well, number one, I wanted to have some art in this tutorial so you're not just looking at boring text. But more importantly, I wanted to basically have the first, what could be considered the first thing that's specifically related to games in this series. And as the goal of this series is to teach you how to make small games, I want to stress that, small games, um, that this is an important step. So we've got some, we've got, we've now written our own function. Not only have we written our own function in this tutorial, we've told uh, a piece of art over time what to do. We've told it where we want it to go. And we've, to and we've also told it uh, what we want it to do when it hits a certain point. So essentially we've got our looping animation. And by the way, I forgot to mention here, go to and play one is the last code which, which makes this loop back to the beginning. And frankly, even need that. I think I'm being redundant. Because the timeline's looping, I don't know why I haven't had that in there. Yeah, forget about that line. Even simpler. You got a single if statement that's creating your loop here. How, how's that for simplicity? Um, now I've covered a lot and uh, I hope that made sense. Please leave comments, please subscribe, and uh, follow Big Toe Interactive, bigtoeinteractive.com. Urban Santa is uh, free now on the App Store, our first iPad game, the second game we've made, our first one using Adobe Air, and uh, we converted it to the, to the iPad. Urban Santa, please check it out. Thank you.